My name is Christian. I'm going to be building a timber frame structure that's going to serve as a proof of concept for a house I'm planning on building in a few years. We're going to start with this, to this, to this, to this. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be making this joint right here, or at least one half of this joint. This is the bridle joint that goes at the top of the roof. This is what holds the two 4x4 rafters together. Eventually, there will be a peg driven through here, but we'll leave that for another session. I'm also letting these pieces dry a little bit. The wood I'm working with today is a little bit wetter than I prefer to work with, but it's what I've got at the moment, so it's what we're going to use. Um, this piece will be, so the uh, tenon or tongue, whichever, however you want to call it, I believe it's the tongue out of the, the tongue will be cut on the longer rafter. And this, what I'm working on right here is the shorter rafter. This is about 11 to 12 foot long. Um, I'll be cutting it a little bit shorter when I've actually got this cut in and it's dried a little bit and I'm just ready to work with it. The nice part about leaving it long is if I mess this up, I've got at least one other shot uh, in this piece of wood. Speaking of getting things wrong, this piece is a test piece. That's why I, these pieces weren't cut off. The order of operations um, is something you have to think about a lot, and if I've got extra wood, like this actually used to be a much longer um, piece here, I cut a few test joints in it before trimming it off to what I, is about, is about going to be the final length for, for at least for now. Um, this angle comes from CAD. I've made this piece right here. This is just drawn on. It's definitely not the most accurate thing in the world, but we're also starting with the least accurate joint. Um, most of these, as you could probably see by being able to move it and not really have it um, drag at all, is that this joint the accuracy matters the least out of all the joints I'm going to be doing in this project. So this is what I'm starting with. This is where I get my tools uh, sharpened up, get figure out where I need to straighten the saw, if I need to change set, anything like that. This is where I'm going to do it. I've actually already cut the other 10 of these. This is the last one. Um, so we'll go through it together. The layout, I've got this angle set off the template, so that's where we're going to start. One thing I've done earlier is I've noticed that because I've run this through a planer, the last three to four inches, there's just a hair of snipe, which will make the layout a little bit harder. Um, additionally, it's square enough that I'll have to, I'll talk about some of the issues I'm going to run, run into later, but it's square enough that I can just continue on with the layout as is right now. So I'm going to go past the snipe, line everything up, and straight away. And I'm going to carry it forward just a little bit on this face, then take the square and bring the line across. Coming across this way. So this appears to be pretty close to parallel, uh, one side versus the other here. If this weren't parallel, A, there'd be something wrong with my setup, and I need to take a look at that. And B, I'd have to, I'd probably, do, for this sort of joint, I'd just, just take the average. This is also, most of the work I'm going to be doing in this project is going to be center line layout, which is pretty straightforward. I'll be doing some of that here, but because it's just a rafter, I'm taking some shortcuts. Um, so now that that's in place, I'm going to take the template, take the side where I've transferred the lines down, and figure out where the next angle is going to go. Let's shift that a little bit so I can get the block in there. And straight down. And carry it across. And checking again from the other side, just because I like to be a little bit parallel. At the end of the day, this. So the amount of layout I'm doing here is overkill, and honestly, I could probably do this more accurately just by measuring as I went instead of using templates. But again, this is practice, is getting back into the 
mindset of how do you cut this, what's the order of operations, what do you need to think about as you're going through each step in order to leave yourself wiggle room just in case something goes wrong. Um, so I'm going to mark this two inches in from this side in a couple places. So I want to find a reasonably accurate center line going down the middle of this piece. There we go. So now that I've got that marked in a few spots, I can take a longer straight edge, put it against here, drawing just a hair, and bring that along. In other videos, I'll be going into a lot more detail on how to do this the right way, not the quick way. Um, which I, I just want to be want to make sure you understand that this is not best practice is what I'm doing right here. And for this case, I don't think it matters too too much. So took the template, scribed some lines on. So I am going to flip this around, do the layout on the other side, and then we're actually going to cut this whole front piece off, because if we cut the front piece off now, we don't have to do two secondary cuts later. Um, also makes me think that potentially the next structure I make when I get to it, I'll make these at 90 degrees instead of, I think this is 22 and a half, well, it's a, it's a 45 degrees, but um, that line is at 22 and a half because it's a pain. Being able to just bore through, pop it out, and then clean it up, much easier. But it's good practice for everything else we're doing in this project. So I'm carrying the lines over, which you can't see on this side, but trust me, they're there. And bring this across and bring this across. The other thing is I can look on this side where I've put lines, which I should have done so I don't have to flip myself upside down. But this should line up. This should be consistent all the way around. So if I now put this here, put this line in here, it lines up with what I drew on the other side. Pretty well too. Okay, doing the same thing one more time. Making And this is where I'm going to fudge it a little bit. Now this is, if you get lumber that's not all sorts of screwy, then you should be all set. But for me, because I've cut this myself on the band sawmill, and because I am still working on trimming in the bed, um, or I guess getting it accurate enough, this stuff isn't exactly perfect. But, this is where if you're doing the proper center of line layout, it wouldn't actually matter. Um, I'm going to be approximating it a little bit. So if I look at how square this is, that's off by, let's call that an eighth of an inch, um, where this shifted in this direction an eighth of an inch relative to the other face. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to mark a center line that's over about that much. So it's, this is center relative to the other side. Again, this is this is not the way you should do this, but it's the way I'm going to do it for now, just because these are rackets. And I, I'm pretty sure I can get away with it. We'll, we'll see in a month or two when well, this actually goes together. All right. So that's been offset by a little bit. So that's what I'm going to use to line this up. And see how that. We'll see if I end up going, I may end up coming back to that later in the video and adjusting it, but we'll see what it looks like once we get this end cut, because that, that part's not going to matter. So, like that. And, let's see, I'm going to in this direction here. I've got room for this stuff.
these workbench, or these uh, sawhorses, aren't entirely, they're not as consistent as I'd like between making these and the next thing I do, I'm gonna have to go through and clean it up. But they're strong, they're not going anywhere, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, next question is, what are we gonna cut through a four by four with? If I had all the tools that I wanted, I'd use this saw. Unfortunately, this saw doesn't really have enough set. If I were to start cutting through this, it would bind up pretty quickly. That's a, that's a function of, I don't have a saw set, and I don't feel like going through this with a file and bending each teeth every other way, or going through with a hammer. And this one is still pretty green. Um, it's been sitting for, I think this one's getting close to six months. Well, it's been, each of these pieces is between three and six months, which is, a bare minimum um, that really you can work with this on. Um, so instead, we're going to do something that's a little bit more fun, but can be a little bit trickier to start. This right here, it's one man crosscut saw. Um, it's actually a pretty nice saw. I'm still figuring out exactly how to um, get it properly set up, but teeth are sharpened. I manually went through and set this. This took two or three days, about a month or two ago, of just sitting down with the file and uh, just going through and fixing the teeth and getting it all straightened up. So, you might be wondering, how do you start this here? If I, if I just start going at this, it's just going to go all over the place. What we're going to do is a slightly exaggerated version of what I've seen several other people do, and that's cut a, well, like a stir curve with a chisel. And this gives a place for the saw to start. And I'm not being super accurate with this here because this phase is going to be cleaned up either with a slick, a chisel, or depending on how far it's over with a saw when I go to put the building together. This is a little bit over four inches, and this will make it even a little bit further. Because when I put the pieces together, not all these pieces are exactly the same size. They're all about four by fours, but plus or minus up to a quarter of an inch. So when I get the whatever piece I grab to match this, put it in here, this will probably overhang by a little bit, so I'll clean that up later. So I'm just doing a rough pass on this for now. But that doesn't mean I can be too, too sloppy. I still want to be on the outside of this line and get it as close to perpendicular as I can, because that'll also make some of the layout a little bit easier. You can hear the, that sticking right there. That's part of one of the things I'm working on is this saw is missing half of the raker, and I'm trying to adjust the other one so it still takes a little bit off, but doesn't bite into quite so much. on the saw. This saw is heavy enough to bring itself through the on this project. So quickly running through that, I'm going to follow these lines down. Same from the bottom. 
And that should, she lines up better than I thought. Bring that down. Bring this down here. That's actually reasonably close. Kind of happy with that. The guesstimation I did on the other side looks like it paid off, but we'll see when this joint is done. So now that we have that marked, Nice, thin, somewhat underset, but should work well enough. Rips off. I'll come over here and start just marking my way down. And I am trying to keep the plate of the saw as up as straight up and down as I can, and also guiding it with this finger here, a lot more it needs to go. And this is something I've struggled with because I'm paying attention to three or four things at once, which I'm not as good at as I would like to be. back to this side. So at this point, I can start popping these out. When I originally tried this on some of the test pieces, I didn't cut those two lines, and I had a lot of trouble splitting out parts of the sides here. Because we've separated the cheeks from the material that we want to take out, we're not as much at risk of splitting this or going too deep back into the 
seat of the joint that we want to keep. So I'm going to start going down this way. Just taking the little bits out. I'm also going to clamp this in place. Should make my life a little bit easier as I go. So it does slow down flipping the piece over. So we just gonna work our way down like we're cutting mortise. A little bit by little bit. Further down you go, the bigger piece, the bigger pieces you can take. And once you get down half an inch to an inch, piece sticking in there. This is the part that I like the best. It's coming down to the end, lining it up, and get a couple swift taps, and pop a nice big chunk out. And just keep working your way down. One other thing is I'm aiming for about here, not here, because I know that I can always come back and sort of clean this up later. That will be a lot easier than trying to hit the line exactly. One of the reasons I can go, well, relatively this fast. I can already tell you that I'm going to be doing a good amount of pairing on this piece to get it fitting because the template is slightly wider by just a hair than this chisel. If the chisel is sticking, which it is, that's letting me know that I cut these lines a little bit close together, uh, which is better than all where you've cut into your cheeks, but it just means it's going to stick a little bit as you go through the process. That's fine. Just leave that off for now. And then forward, because if I go too far, I'll actually end up splitting through the bottom and messing up the underside of the joint. There's still going to be some tear out in the middle, but in the middle, no one's going to see it and it's not going to affect the integrity of the joint quite as much. Pop a little bit more out. That's about two thirds of the way through. I'm going to flip it over and continue from the other side. I'm also going to move it forward. The closer your are to hitting on top of your sawhorse, the less energy is wasted trying to bend the beam. Or in this case, rafter. Alright, almost done. 
So, especially on this side, I'm starting off a little bit slow because if I hit too hard, I'm going to split into this piece, which I really want to avoid. But again, this is why I do the pieces that need the least amount of accuracy are the furthest away from anyone I ever actually closely looking at. I think I'll split a little bit off here. Just give myself a little bit more room to work with. I'm going to just take a little detour to correct some mistakes. Just taking some of this off, give myself room for the chisel here. Good sharp chisel makes all the difference. That's much better. So, at some point, I'm just going to try the chisel. Scrape through, pop out the piece. So now it's a little bit chattered up in here, but overall it's not that bad. I'm going to work my way through from this side, flip it over, do the same, then clean up the cheeks. Looking all right. I'm going to take just a little bit more out here. Clean that up. Start paring down the sides as well. Starting with eyeballing, I never use a couple spots. They're all ready. Off. Now, you take the template, fit that along. That part's looking good. This is a little stiff. So I'll take this. Again, if this were a more critical joint where the tolerance is mattered more, I'd be going quite a lot slower and probably using the slick behind me to clean some of this up. But for the rough work we're doing now, this is just fine. Just a little bit on the end here. Your fingers can actually pick up quite a lot of. Uh, or sorry, quite small tolerances that your eyes might miss. Alright. That's going pretty good. So now we flip it. Grab 
under. And just do just a hair bit more clean up on this. Should be able to take this, which is not exactly the right size, but it's close enough. Put it in. Get the tap. Fits like a glove. So that is the top of our structure. I still need to make 11 of these. This is the last one of these I'll be making. Um, probably takes more time to clean that up just a little bit more before the structure goes together, but you get the idea. So. Hopefully you stay with me through the rest of the project and hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.